So I had these two uh, feed feed containers. These are sweet feed mix for the horses, and when they uh, got done with them, I put a few holes. They already had a, some holes in the bottom of them, but I put a few more holes in the bottom of them, and I stuck them here and threw some dirt into them. And you can see I, I'm over here cleaning them up. Um, I'm going to be planting broccoli pretty soon, and I'm going to put some broccoli in these uh, two containers here so that I got them right by the back door for munching on. But before I... Um, but as I'm cleaning them up, I had plenty of this plant in. And, of course, probably most people who do any herbalism realize what this plant is. And this is, of course, stinging nettles. Uh, when I dug up the dirt, obviously there must have been a couple roots in there. And I am going to take these nettles out because I don't want them in there shading out my broccoli. But, believe it or not, these nettles have more nutrients than my broccoli does. <laughs> so I'm, of course, going to eat them in the first... I'm going to eat them. I already took the nettles out of here and then uh, one of my apprentices said, why don't you show people what you're doing here. Now these here, these little leaves, these little plants here, we got a whole mess of them right around here. But uh, here, those ones I'll actually... These are lamb's quarters and lamb's quarters are pretty easy to... Uh, also known as goosefoot, which is the one I like to use because their feet or their leaves kind of look, they're in the shape of kind of goosefoot. And the easiest way to tell lamb's quarters or goosefoot is when it comes out, it does have its own yeast, and you can see on the newer leaves, you can see the white powder really easy. And then the, as the leaves get older, of course, the white powder seems to fade away. There still is much white powder on these, but because the leaves are bigger, you don't see it as much. And lamb's quarters also is highly nutritious, more nutritious than spinach. So um, these, between these two things, and I also have some crabgrass, and actually, believe it or not, crabgrass has some nutri nutrient value, though I'm not too thrilled with crabgrass. I don't like the feel of it. And human bodies, you really have to process crabgrass because our bodies were not uh, complete vegetarians. We're omnivores, and uh, our bodies do not have the ability to get the nutrients out of this without processing it first. Um, but the lamb's quarters here, I'm going to be picking that all before I dig this up and get it, start getting it ready. I'm going to mix a little compost in with this. And, um, and of course, in the nettles we're going to. And the nettles, um, you can do, do a ton of different things with nettles. The easiest and best way, or the easiest way to do it is just pour some hot water over it, let it sit for a minute, like making tea, and drink it. Uh, if you've never had nettle tea, which is more often called nettle broth than nettle tea, you should give it a try because it is an amazingly rich flavor. Uh, most people who have it the first time can't believe they're eating totally vegetables. They, mo a lot of people will think uh, they're eating uh, some kind of meat broth because it, it is so rich. Uh, nettles also can just, you can wash the leaves under water. It gets rid of the stinging part. Cook them briefly like you do spinach, just, you know, quick steam cook and eat the greens. Um, this is about probably the highest you want to go with them before you start. Other than that, you just take the, the little new tops that are coming out. Um, but you can still, these, these leaves are still in pretty good shape. Uh, just take off the ones like this one here. doesn't look very good. And that you can use into broth. The broth you can can. Uh, it takes 90 minutes, an hour and a half in a pressure canner of 10 pounds, but you can can the broth and keep it. Uh, which makes a great vegetable broth all winter long, where you can add it to other things too. Uh, the thing that I use bro uh, nettles for that a lot of people do not use nettles for is if you put the nettles in there and as ma many nettles as you have, you put about half that much water or a third that much water. You don't want to cover the nettles. You just want to put a little bit of water in the bottom and you cook the nettles in it. And these are washed nettles, of course, and you cook them and cook them and cook them. And then uh, when they're done, uh, you, you can discard the nettles and uh, or eat them but most of the nutrients are in the water. Then you cook that water again down by half. So you, you cook it slowly and steam off, get the steam off of them and take it down by half. And then if you put that into milk that's about 200 degrees, you heat up milk very slowly because you don't want to burn it, and you put this in, and it is a vegetable rennet. Um, it, Nettles make an excellent vegetable rennet. I do it for soft cheeses. It's not good for aged cheese because vegetable rennet in aged cheese um, tends to give it a bitter flavor. But any of your soft cheeses, mozzarella, uh, um, just plain farmer's cheese, uh, uh, you know, a lot of different soft 
quickly eaten cheeses very good and it's free uh, instead of going out and paying for rent it you get uh, free rent it for, right from nature and like I said you just take this and however much you have like if you've got a cup of it then you put like a third to a half a cup of water you don't need much water in there and then you just cook it down these will cook down very quickly they're like spinach you can have a whole lot of it and when you start cooking it it gets smaller and smaller and um, then when after you've cooked it for I don't know 15 20 minutes you very very low simmer then you take that out and again half that water and there you have it you have your liquid rennet and you use it about um, oh about a fourth of a cup to a half of a rennet tablet um, if you're using rennet, rennet tablets or you know it, you, it's pretty close to what you use regular you use it for regular rennet anyway but nettles make an excellent rennet for making cheese uh, another things you can do with rennet or with I'm sorry not with rennet with nettles is nettles live they're, they're literally sucking the nutrients out of this soil they're a very greedy 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 plant and they like a lot of nutrients and they suck it all out they tend to grow in places that are highly nutritious uh, stream banks things like that and they take out a lot of the nutrients from the soil and you can use net it, nettles that are growing in other places put them make a nettle tea out of that and then use that nettle now all the nutrients are in the leaves which is why when you eat them um, it's very good for you it's also good for your plants so you can just take like uh, ladlefuls and ladle it around your plants and use it uh, for giving plants, especially plants that look like they're getting a little yellow or something, highly rich in nitrogen, things like that. But I'm just going to eat it today. I'm going to make, I, I've got myself my little bag. Um, that's, it's very windy today, so my little bag is up on the porch, and I'll go get it. But I'm going to get these, and I'm going to get the lamb's quarters, and I'm going to make a, that'll be my dinner, and it's going to come out of these two pots. Uh, enough for, enough for me to have dinner with, um, from these two pots just from wild edibles. Then I'm going to put a little bit of comp mix a little compost into these and have my broccoli in here tomorrow. So uh, don't don't just go willy nilly through your garden throwing plants out because uh, like I said, out of these things here, most of what is in this container and same with this container here. In fact this container actually had a bone set plant in it which uh, was really cool to find. I, I did transplant that but but most of what was in these two containers is edible and uh, you know nature provides too. I, I, I garden because I believe that having your food source closer to you the closer you can get, have your food source to you the better it is for you better it is for the earth and the more connected you are and of course connection is what my spirituality is about is being connected so um, having your food source close to you is a great way to be connected growing your own food is the closest you can have it uh, nobody's going to have to ship that food to you you know exactly what went into that food because it was your love and your blood and your sweat and your tears and this is but before you just go and willy-nilly tear up the soil there you go dinner for today nature provided my dinner nettles and lamb's quarters